Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick overview of the new Bonus Tools file browser um, based on what used to be Layout Tools, actually still is Layout Tools, but now it's no longer a separate install, it's just going to be part of Bonus Tools. And instead of being um, a prop assembly tool, it's now going to be a general purpose file browser, it's a visual file browser. So you will no longer have to go in and you know, assuming if you use this, you'll no longer have to go into the file browser, search by name, go into subfolders and so on you'll be able to visually do it from a simple tab-based browser or icon-based browser. So when you first launch Bonus Tools, or rather Layout Tools from Bonus Tools, it will launch a setup that will ask you to set up hotkeys. You can bypass this if you don't want to, but I recommend it because it's a quick way of accessing it, and it also uses hotkeys that aren't really used for much anything that's very useful anyway. Uh, so you just say OK, and then from now on, when you click L, it will toggle the Layout Tools UI in the over by the channel box. If you hit Shift L, it will toggle the floating UI. So again, L and Shift L will go back and forth between the two. Um, so if you wanted to have it on a separate separate monitor, you could hit Shift L. So otherwise, there are three tabs. There's Browse, there's Transform, and there's Snap Align. So Transform and Snap Align, I'm not going to go into. I'll do that another time. But for uh, for now, I just want to go over the browser. So the idea is it just mimics what's on the file system. So if you set your project to a specific uh, location, and assuming you have a project structure set up, then it will search through that. And by default, it's just going to find the scenes folder. So you'll notice it says folder scenes, and then it gives me all the files. They're in my scenes folder. That's equivalent to everything that you see here. Um, actually, sorry, my folders on here it is everything that you see here is what you see over here except you're seeing it in a visual manner so these icons have to be created um, I'll talk about that in a second but right now it's just working as a standard browser so you see the file you hover over it you get information about what the name is you click and whatever your your operation is set to it'll either open import or reference that file so I can basically just click on a file and it will open that file. I no longer have to sift around through the file browser. So basically, every time I click, I'm opening a new file. Simple as that. Um, so now what I can do is, let's say I want to create an icon. So I've got this file here. Um, if I don't like that icon, I can right-click. And anytime you right-click, you get a, um, a context-sensitive menu for that file. So I'll right-click on this file. I say Create Icon from File. And that will open the file and then allow me to generate the icon. So it uses the default camera. There are options in here. If you go under the icon settings, uh, you can choose which renderer you want to render the icon with, Mental Ray, VP2, or Maya. Uh, you can use the scene camera, scene lights, or scene settings, or you can use uh, an automatic creation, which um, if your file doesn't, doesn't contain a camera, doesn't contain lights, you can have it auto-generate that for the icon. Um, and then you basically get a heads-up display with a little border here to indicate your icon size. You basically frame in on your object. Let's say I wanted to get right in on the face. I frame in on that. That's going to become the icon for that particular file. So now when I say exit, you'll notice it isolates that file. So that's another thing that I added is the ability to isolate specific files. So let's say I wanted to work on this gun. I can right-click. I can say isolate file, and it's going to isolate that in the UI. Um, it's basically just using search settings, which is another thing that I can do. So let's say I, I turn off the isolation or I just clear that. That'll bring back all of my files. Um, I'll show you a couple of things that you can do here. If we go into the search settings, I can turn on include subfolders. And now it's going to, it's basically going to recursively search all of the folders from the root of the project. So if I go into the root of the project, you can see I have my main scene file, and then inside I have this file called assembly. I have this file called scene assembly. I have DX11 examples. I've got all this different stuff. So it's built essentially a visual folder for each of my subfolders. So if I go in here, you can see that it's built a dozen or so folders, and each of those folders contains uh, Maya files with associated icons. So a um, couple things to point out. Uh, you can set this up to reference or you can set this up to open or import. So the default method is right here. This is the left mouse button method. If I Now if I, if I click, it's going to import a file into my scene. So now I can have this guy and then I can import this scene into it. And now what you'll see is I've got my two scenes merged together. So it's imported one scene into another. Um, if I set that to open or reference or assembly, it's going to do one of those operations. So you can set it as a default behavior. 
Um, or you can just go in here and right click and say, okay, well, I want to open the scene and that's going to open the scene for me as opposed to import it. So I say, okay, well, I don't want to open that scene. Let me just minimize these. I want to open this scene, right click, open, and that will open that scene instead. So a couple other things that we can do. Um, one is you can go directly to a, an OS uh, file browser. So let's say um, I'm into a subfolder here. These are a bunch of folders within folders. So let's say I want to isolate um, this folder that has a bunch of uh, whatever they are, containers. I can right click on this and first of all, I can isolate the folder and that will isolate um, only the icons for that folder. It's not going to show me the clutter of any of the other folders. You can also right click on this and I can say show in OS browser and what that will do is that will just simply pop up a native OS browser whether you're in Linux or Windows or uh, well, my layout here is messed up. Whether you're in Linux or Windows or Mac OS uh, that'll just bring up the location of that file. So if I go to, let me just clear my settings here and let's say I go to this one here and I'm like okay I don't know what that ball right there is. Let's right click on it. I'll go into show us OS browser and there it is. Ball, block, cone and so on. So now I can do what I need to do. You'll notice this is also where it keeps the icons folder. There are three settings for icons. You can either create it in the same folder as the file. You can create it in a sibling folder to the file. Those are the icons for that particular folder. Uh, or if you're working with projects you can create one single icons folder at the top level of your project which will contain all of your files and that's just a setting it'll search all three but it will when it creates it it will do one or the other so a few other things to point out um, let's say that I wanted to switch projects now I just go in here set it to a different project as soon as I switch new projects I click update it's going to refresh based on that project so now I have an entirely new project here if I come in here and say I want to open that scene now I'm opening a scene from a totally different project and you can see that the icon represents what's in the scene now another thing that I can do is let's say that I wanted to create um, an icon after the fact I can come in here and while I'm working on my scene let's say that I make some changes and let's whatever let's say I go in and I do something like scaling up the gun or maybe I come in here and do something you know, crazy like this uh, whoa maybe I do something weird like that where I actually change the model and I want that to be incorporated um, so now what I can do is I know it came from this file so I can right click on this file and I can say um, create icon from current scene so instead of opening a new scene that's just gonna basically mask out this scene and now I can focus in you know on the changes that I've made say render icon it knows to associate it with that particular file I can basically just keep redoing this until I get it right and say that's the way I want it there we go it looks great and now I say exit you'll notice it's it's filtered that file I say exit and now it brings me back all of my files again so there is a filtering system that this is using so right now it's showing me everything so let's say I wanted to find uh, anything with the word modeling in it. So I can go in here under my browser settings, I have search settings, and I can say I want to search my files. And anything, anytime I find the word MOD for modeling, I want to filter that file. And it looks like it didn't actually find it. Maybe I need to do a capital. It is case sensitive, so I'll do a capital. And there, sure enough, it found my modeling file. If I hover over that, that's my, my 2015 modeling demo. So if I have lots of files, this mix is more interesting. If I go back to the other project, um, and again, I just click update. Now it'll filter for the new project. It keeps that filter. So now it's found three new modeling files. There's modeling part one, there's modeling mod three, whatever, modeling poly reduce, modeling part two, and so on. So let's say instead of searching for mod, um, let's just clear that. And that'll bring all of my files back. So I've got all these different files. So let's say I wanted to find uh, anything um, with the letters, uh, let's see, building. So I'm looking for all the buildings. So I'll just go in here and I'll say I want to search uh, for any file that has the word build in it. I say OK. Uh, and again, I didn't use case sensitive. Build, there we go. And I spelled it wrong. Let's try this one more time. B-U-I-L-D. So now it's going to find any file that contains the word building and it also isolates the folders. So it found all these different parts and pieces that are associated with buildings. Um, so now what I can do is instead of having these all in one folder, I can come in here and say I want to consolidate all these. So right now it's going to show me icons for every folder. 
for every file, for every folder. So if I click consolidated, now what it's going to do is it's going to show me all of the building files lumped into one big group, essentially. So it's using a combination of different filters. Um, and you can turn all this on or all this off, basically. So if I go back to separated, it's going to show me all the individual folders. And then if I go in here and say clear search settings, then it's going to remove any of the filters. So you can also search for folders. So you'll see here I've got maybe, I don't know, probably 15, 20 different folders. Some of them have uh, prefixes on them. So I can come in here and say, give me, and this is the way the old layout tools used to work. Um, I can say, give me a folder search for everything that has the word prop in it. And now it's going to go in and it's going to isolate all of these folders that have props in them. So you can still use it as a prop kind of import system, but you can also just use it as a regular file browser. So a couple of other things I wanted to show. Uh, let's go back to the other project. Uh, it's a little simpler. Again, I just switch projects and I click update. It's using, it'll give you a notice here if it can't find any files. Basically it says there's something wrong. So it gives you five things to look for. And in this case, I've got a search folder still set up, search prefix still set up. So I just basically clear that. And now it's removed any of the search and now it's only going to show me the files themselves. Oh, I do have a save to shelf mechanism so that if you're working between different projects and different uh, search settings, you can actually save those settings to a shelf so you can quickly uh, configure your, your settings from a simple shelf button. So uh, a couple of things to point out here. You'll notice in some cases it doesn't find the icon. That's because the icon doesn't exist. So there's a couple of different ways of doing this. One is I can right click on the file. I showed you this before and I can just say create from file. And that will automatically go in and build an icon for that file. So if I exit that, now you'll see that one file has an icon. Another thing that I can do is I can batch render. So if I right click, I can say batch render icons for the folder. And this will freeze the Maya UI, just so you know, but this will basically go in and batch all of those. Now you'll notice that by batching them, I get these weird results. Uh, that's because it's using probably uh, the wrong settings. So it's by default, it's going to use the settings for the file when it does the batch which may or may not be set up appropriately. So if I save the scene in a weird way, you'll notice the foot of the orc is only showing up. I can actually go in here and I can set this to automatic uh, and I can do it for any of these individually, cameras, lights, or render settings. And then I can right click and I can say batch and now it's gonna automatically frame the camera, automatically light the scene and automatically set up some default render parameters so that now I get this kind of generic icon. And if I wanna change that, I can. Like the tree is a little small so I can come in here and basically say, you know, create new icon for that particular scene. And it'll update, you know, just that one. And when I say exit, then I'll bring everything else back. So a uh, few other things to point out here. Uh, we can, I don't know if I said this or not already, but we can display everything in name only mode. And that will show me all, just like a standard list of names. So it shows me based on the file name. Um, I can, of course, show small icons, medium icons, large icons, and then I've got an extra large with the name. So now it's going to show me, and this is kind of my preferred way of working with smaller sets of files, is you see the icon and you see the name of the file. Um, and then one other thing that I added is, uh, let's say I'm working on this tree and I wanted to then go in and make a change to this head. Rather than modifying the scene, I can just right click and I can say, um, where did it go? Open in new Maya session. And what that will do is it will spawn a new Maya session and it will automatically open uh, to that scene. So now I've got, it's going to take a little while to open. There we go. So now I've got a brand new Maya session, which is still opening for some reason. Let me pause. Oh, there we go. I've got a brand new Maya session, which of course is really, really big because I didn't save it with the small layout, but now I've got a brand new Maya session here that contains the head. I can make changes to the head, do whatever I need to do, then save that out, and I haven't affected the existing scene that I'm working on with the tree. Um, so anyway, you get the basic idea there. So hopefully that's uh, enough of an idea to pique your interest, um, and maybe if you guys want to play around with it, you can let me know uh, how, it, how it goes. I also added support for scene assembly, and uh, I'll go into this in a bit more detail later. I use a suffix system to tag assembly files. Uh, otherwise, I think I've gone over pretty much everything as far as how it works. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks, bye.